got it. So uh, this is being recorded only in the main room. So there'll be a lot of breakouts here. And when you go into a breakout room, you will not be recorded. And that's an invitation then to put your camera on so your um, fellow participants can see who you are and put your sound on as well when you go into the breakout room. The breakout rooms are going to be three to four people. So a small, tight little group. It's going to be a private meeting between you to talk about whatever it is I prompt you with. Um, but it's nicer when you're in a room with just very few people to be able to see who they are. It's a bit, a little, I find it a little bit unnerving to be talking to three black screens. So um, consider that when you go in there. In the main room, if you don't want to be filmed, um, I quite understand that. And you're welcome to just, um, just sort of hide away like you are. Uh, you're, also, you're welcome to have your sound on unless you've got some horrible kind of buzzing noises or screaming in the background then. But um, given that it's kind of just regular noise, it's okay to put your sound on. But certainly when you go in the breakouts, um, let's make them as natural as possible. Um, so welcome and thank you very much for coming. Uh, it's, I, th this is, uh, as I said, it's gonna be, you know, um, a meetup of conversation and dialogue between, between the participants. And I shall prompt you along the way here hoping that most of you have read the description that was on the on the website, but in case not, I'll just sort of like summarize it for you. Um, it's, I'm bouncing off the phrase that you hear very often in social situations, you know, perhaps if you're at a party, you've met someone for the same time, for the first time, um, and they want to know something about you, we're curious people, and the, the phrase that we usually use is, what do you do for a living? Um, and uh, I can be cynical about it and think, oh, why do they want to know that? You know, kind of categorize me or put me in some kind of box so they know, you know, so they can kind of identify me or they can kind of guess at my salary. Because you don't want to say to someone, how much do you earn? But if you say, what do you do for a living? You know, you can kind of quickly estimate um, whether someone's worth is equivalent to yours or better or worse. So, um, but of course, you know, there's the other side of it is people that just genuinely kind of want something to spark a conversation. So, if I say to someone, what do you do for a living? And they say, oh, I'm a software developer. I've got something I can identify with. I go, oh, I'm like that too. Um, and then we can use that as a spark for the conversation. Um, but it's rather limiting and it's rather narrow and it isn't really about living. It's about working and it's about income. Those are really the, the focus of those questions. Um, I don't know, can we turn that ping ping off when people come in? Because there's a lot of that going on, isn't there? I don't know if we can... Uh handle that Alexander let's see um, I will do my best to do no, that we just, we just live with it so um what do you do for a living I'm sure you've all been asked a question like that you know perhaps more directly what work do you do um a reasonable question but quite a narrow question it doesn't really talk about who we are as people um it, you know, as I said, it's about assessing the worth of somebody quite often, and so we can kind of categorize them and um, and sense who they are in the bigger ecosystem of the neighborhood or the environment or the community that we're in. There was a book that was published a few years ago that some of you may have come across, some of you may even have read or seen his talk. Um, a book is called uh, Reinventing Organizations by Frederick Laloux. And... Um, the book is really looking at how organizations can become something bigger than they currently are. So um, how an organization can become um, what he talks about in terms of um, his language in the book is he just uses the term teal organization. How does an organization become teal? What does teal mean? It means an organization who is um, uh, bigger than a machine. Right, so the paradigm of most organizations today is, is kind of like the efficiency of a machine is what we're looking for in our organizations. So how do we create the machine, the perfect machine to produce as much as we need to produce where everyone is kind of got, there's minimum waste, everyone's got their place, everyone knows what they're doing, you know, and hierarchies and silos kind of emerge from that paradigm. We try to model our, our organizations on something that feels more like a machine. Then there's these companies that have moved beyond that. Um, into something that is more family-like. It's more kind of like creating a sense of a, uh, a bit more of a loving environment or more caring environment. Companies like Zappos are usually held up um, as being an example of that. Southwest Airlines is another one with a bit more humanity in it. 
I don't know if anyone's ever flown with Southwest Airlines, but you know, 10 years ago or more, you noticed a difference because when they get on to make the announcements at the beginning of the flight, it was very casual, very improvised, and, and they would make jokes and uh, they would use their own banter and it wasn't a script. And it was quite different to most of the other airlines that were very rigid and, and scripted. So you started to notice a difference and you felt welcomed. You felt, felt like this is human. There's a human being talking to me here, right? And so that's the sort of um, direction that organizations are going to. And Lulu was saying, well, there's another further place we can go to, which is about, um, you know, it's not just about the, the company itself feeling um, in touch with their own values. It's about how do we put it out to the world? How do we, how do we reach out to the world? Um, so um, in that book, he calls it, he identifies some um, 10 organizations, I think in all, in total, maybe 12, who live to this set of, of um, ideas. And he's narrowed it down to three things, essentially. And one of them, the one we're gonna look at today is wholeness at work. That's what he's looking at, is that how do you create a company that is um, a healthy, living, evolving ecosystem um, that serves the community and serves its customers and serves its employees in loving ways. So one of those things we need is to recognize that people are whole people, they're not just their job title. That's what we're gonna be looking at today. For interest, the other two uh, aspects that he calls out are one that is very familiar to people in the agile world, which he, he calls self-management. We might use the term self-organization. So giving people the autonomy to manage their own work, essentially that was a second really important quality. And the third one is evolutionary purpose. So an organization that has a static fixed purpose is more likely to go under, becomes a fragile organization rather than what has now been called a non-fragile organization, an organization that is robust and can withstand change. Um, many companies in the last year and a half have gone under um, because of that lack of robustness. The ones that survive are the ones that are able to adapt. So they have evolutionary purpose. So these are the qualities that organizations need to need to begin to take on. So when we're looking at wholeness um, of a person, wholeness at work, what does that mean? It, it, a lot of people would shy away from that. Um, upper management might think, well, I don't want people to be, I don't know why they always go to this. It's like bringing your problems to work. Being a whole person is somehow equated with bringing your problems into the workplace. You know, we've got this idea of you've got to be professional. Um, I don't know what you think about that term, but when I hear the term professional, I cringe a little bit because I think it means being sort of dehumanizing. It's not wanting to recognize that people have lives and feelings and worries and cares. And now it doesn't mean wholeness of work doesn't mean that you should be coming to work and complaining about your family or your, you know, how depressed you feel or, you know, the difficulty with your neighbors or stuff like that. Uh, it just means bringing all of your life to bear in the work that you do. So you're more than your job title. You are all of the experience you've ever had in the workplace and beyond the workplace that you can draw on. Um, they're transferable skills, if you like. We can draw on those and we can bring them to bear in the work that we do. We don't have to worry about um, thinking it's inappropriate, you know, to talk about this other job had nothing to do with this job. Therefore, I shouldn't be comparing. I shouldn't be using the skills from that. Um, or my experience of um, bringing up a disabled child, you know, um, that has nothing to do with work, so I shouldn't talk about it, but it has everything to do with work because it's about how, how you've learned maybe to be compassionate and caring, how you've learned to slow down uh, rather than rush through things. And so all of the skills that you've acquired in being that parent um, is something that you can bring into the workplace. So that's what wholeness at work is. It's about bringing your whole self, you know, your, your ideas about health and learning, your values and principles, um, your relationships and how you formed relationships with people in your life might be uh, a good example about how you form relationships with your colleagues in the workplace, how you get through conflict. All right, so all of it matters. And that's what we're going to explore today. So what we're going to create essentially is a, uh, each of you are going to create your own statement of self or something like that. I don't know what you'd want to call it. Statement of self is quite nice. Um, my whole person, um, my whole person description. Um, and it's something that is this, we're going to, you know, get going on it today. You may already have 
done work like this already. Um, but it's something that you can build on in your own time. I'm just going to sort of spark it off with five different prompts um, and ask you, we don't have long in the breakouts. It's going to be a sort of a five minute breakout. I'll shuffle the groups around each time so you get to meet um, quite a few different people in the process of doing this and be able to have conversations with them about each of these different aspects. Okay, um, so have uh, you know writing materials um, available to you, whether you like drawing on your on your tablet or on paper, something nearby, illustrate it, scribble it, make, make notes of this. It's, you know, that, because the reason you're doing it in a dialogue, right, is because you might have your own ideas already, but you're, you, you may well pick up other people's ideas. And uh, somebody might say something that sparks a new idea in you. Um, so you're sharing, you're sharing your own ideas and experiences. For instance, the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna look at um, your, your health and your well-being. So we're going to talk about what do you do to what do you do to for your health and what does health and well-being mean to you? Are we talking physical, mental, emotional? Are we talking all three? Um, you know, so how do you how do you um, exercise those different aspects of you? That's what the conversation is going to be about. Um, and, and what I'd hope in this conversation is that each person gets an opportunity to speak, which is why we're keeping the room small. Um, let me see at the moment we've got, I'm going to three to four participants per room. Yeah, All right, so you won't have any more than four in the room. Uh, and then we're gonna come back from that, here are a couple of sort of popcorn feedbacks from that and maybe some, probably some notes in the chat window is really helpful as well. Then the chat window becomes a, a shared document that you can save and take away and look at later to spark new ideas for yourself because you're only going to be in one of those rooms and there might be some really interesting things going on in the other rooms that will hopefully the participants will bring back and, and throw into sort of single words or short phrases in the chat window. So we're, we're, we're creating a shared document of ideas here and you're also getting some, you know, quite personal conversation around these different things. That's the plan. Sound all right? You ready for this? All right, you get to meet a few people. Um, you're up to you to, you know, how much introductory stuff you do, but I, you know, by, by necessity, we're keeping the breakouts themselves quite short. Um, I also want you to think about how, how might you use this kind of a model, not necessarily this specific prompt, but this kind of a model in some of the teamwork that you do. You know, when you're working with new teams, you know, what, what might you utilize from this method of working over Zoom? because that's where most of the work happens these days, where people can begin to build up relationships and get closer with one another. Okay, so it could also be, possibly be a template for you. Right, so I'm gonna recreate, I'm gonna create the rooms and uh, let's see how it turns out. Uh, five minutes with a 15 second countdown. So try to wrap up your conversations cleanly and uh, come back. Yes, please. If, if we could hear the prompt, prompt again or it, or put it, put it in, have it put in the chat. That would be like, very good. Very nice. Is that Gabor? Thank you. Gabor. Yes, it's me. Hi I there. Almost forgot, I almost forgot to put that. That would be, and Marcus also asked that. Health and well-being. I want to call that first one. Um, if we had a longer session, I would do three separate ones for the different aspects of health. Um, but I think we can kind of wrap them in here. You can, you might choose to focus just on, on your um, emotional health, or you might choose to focus just on physical health in that you decide, all right, you might mix it up a bit and uh, let's just see what comes out of that. So what we're looking at is like, what do you do to, to maintain this, this aspect of your being, this aspect of who you are? What are the important things for you that either you do or you want to do, or you learned from? Um, you might have been a rock climber at some point in your life. And you might have learned something really important that you can then bring into the workplace with you, as an example, but that's all right off you go and guys before we enter the rooms turn on your camera please oh yes oh Tobias, okay, you gave us back. a very important subject for five minutes. <laughs> we needed at least 15 to talk about this. I know, it doesn't leave you long, does it? Um, that's the point, though. It's just a, it's a spark of a conversation, right? So um, 
I would recommend that if you don't already know each other and are not already contacted, that you use this opportunity to share um, your LinkedIn's or emails or something like that so you can pick up the conversation and continue it. That's up to you. Um, let's see what you want to, um, if people want to just sort of uh, type a couple of um, inspirational ideas into the chat window, things that they heard that they found useful um, or they want to remember, it's just something you heard you want to remember, it doesn't have to make sense. Um, and while people are typing, if anyone wants to just kind of give us a quick um, 30 second summary of what happened in their breakout room, I'd be happy to hear it. Any volunteer? Well, I would like to share something. Yeah. And you hear me all right, right? Yes. Yeah, cool. Um, so I, I like the experience of trying to describe my work without using the professional labels and framing it from a more health and well being kind of angle. And um, I noticed to, to stay sane and to mentally be well, um, I try and surround myself with sensible human beings. Um, or if I find them not too sensible, then try and help them become sensible. <laughs> and that's part of your, your work towards yes. emotional yes. well-being. Yes, yeah. No. Yeah, nice one, thank you. Anyone talk about physical well-being at work or beyond work? Uh, we discussed that in our group, and I think a number of us decided that we need to increase it somehow and that COVID didn't help with physical activity. Some of us forgot to dance, some of us forgot to do exercises. So I guess it's like a resolution to do it again, to include it more in our lives, because it's somehow, somehow unbalanced, unbalanced at the moment. We are doing mental stuff, maybe even emotional, but at least we should do more of physical things, even if yeah. we sit around all day. And... and yeah, they're really connected, aren't they? You know, our mental and emotional health improves when our physical health improves. And so a lot of the depression that's been caused by COVID is probably the result of the lack of exercise that people have, you know, done because you know, lots of limits were put on that, weren't they? And then perhaps we imposed our own, mm. um, people a bit more afraid to go out and do stuff. Um, but they are definitely connected. There's a few conversations about COVID in there as well. Yeah. Um, and there's some other interesting things. I like, uh, Christina, you put something in there about, where is it? Taking time to just relax and binge watch TV show on the weekend if you want to. That's important too. It's not always about, you know, getting out and doing stuff. It's about, it's self-care is, is about health and well-being, isn't it? Looking after yourself, making sure you get what you need. Um, not in a selfish way, but you know, just making sure that you're you're looking, you're taking care of yourself. Um, uh, we've also got someone who's uh, recommends switching to no alcohol. That's probably good for you, good for the health, isn't it? Anyway, so stuff came up. I wanted to quickly share my screen with you to show you the the Lulu model I was talking about. It might help to to see it. Um, let me see if I can find that. Here it is. This is the, we call it the model of consciousness. Um, so where we are now is the orange one. That's, these are sort of an, an evolution of uh, groups within society, you know, moving from chieftains to sort of um, army or what you call army or church, very hierarchical top down things to this sort of well-oiled machine paradigm that we've got, that we're living in now. Um, moving into some, some organization of doing into this sort of more family, more paternalistic, perhaps. Um, family is the positive side, paternalistic, maybe not quite so positive. Um, and then, but what, what he's uh, suggesting we strive towards and what he's written this book about is the organizations who are sort of on their way there is towards this living organism idea, this, this sense that the, the organization is alive and changing and morphing and evolving continuously it's not static so a machine organization of course would be quite static wouldn't it because machines don't evolve that you get them running perfectly this is why we have this sort of myth in a lot of our organizations about finding repeatable process you know we introduce agile to an organization and they want to nail it down and go okay we've got it now we're going to document this and roll it out across the whole organization so we're all doing it the same that's the machine mind being used inappropriately because that's not 
It's not what agility is. It's the opposite of agility. Um, but we're trapped in the way our paradigm, our way of thinking. So that's the model um, that he's using there. And if I can just, this is um, an interesting mapping, actually. I don't know if anyone's read a book called Tribal Leadership by Dave Logan, but he's got these five levels um, and beautifully named as well. The, the bottom one there being life sucks, and then my life sucks, um, and your life is better than mine. And then the next one is I'm great, you suck which is pretty much where we are in most organizations at the moment. You know, we're striving to be the best company we can, the best startup, the best this, the best that, the best search engine, the best. We're all better than you. So it's we're good, you suck. Um, moving towards, ideally, this idea of like, we're, we're great. You know, the organization um, as a whole is great. Um, and until ultimately what we're really searching for is that we're looking beyond the organization itself to life as being good. Oh, yeah, I think the orange one here is an internal, I'm great, you suck. So my department's better than your department. That's where the sort of fiefdom thing comes in again, isn't it? Um, my department's better than your department or, or, you know, my top engineer is better than your top engineer. And the green one being that as a company, we're going to outdo all the other companies. That's the, that's the green one in this. It, Logan doesn't colour them. I've just superimposed Dave Logan's ideas on top of Frederick Leloux's colour system there. So I thought there was a lot of overlap, a lot of interest. Anyway, this is part of a whole, um, a whole presentation thing that I'm not going to do now, but I just wanted to share that just so you give you the visual, the visual aspect of that. So we're going to move into the second prompt here, which is, what is it? Gonna be Learning and personal development is the next one we're going to look at. There was, um, you might have heard this, you know, there's sort of some managers have this idea that they don't want to bring training into their organization or they don't want people to be too good because they say, well, what if I train, spend money training all these people and, um, and they leave, they leave the company, you know, they'll have wasted all this money. And the response to that, which, is, which I love is, well, what if you don't train them and they stay? not so good is it because now you've got a bunch of untrained unskilled people who are never going to get better because you won't pay money to make them get better what we want to do of course is train people um put a lot of invest a lot of money into our employees sending them on training and learning and development and make the environment so compelling that they don't want to leave right you won't make people stay by keeping them stupid <laughs> You'll, make, you'll have them stay because they want to stay because what you're offering is such a great organization, right? Again, in Lelou's terms, you're going up towards this, these ideals of, of um, you know, an emergent organization that cares for its people and people want to stay. So learning and development has been, uh, in many organizations now, they're, they're stepping up to this and um, even to the point where some organizations are giving each individual employee uh, autonomy over how they spend their own training budget they get to choose um, rather than being sent you know like sending everyone on a csm course or something it's like what would you like to learn um, go and learn it and come back and tell us about what you learn so we can all benefit from it so we're creating cultures learning cultures essentially and um, that's that's what we're going for. So what's your focus on learning and development? How have you become better at what you do and who you are since you started your journey into the work world? And I'm going to create, uh, again, three to four participants in a room. Hopefully you will find new people in this mix. And uh, five minutes again. Welcome back. I was reading the notes when you were gone there and uh, we'll save these chat windows. There's some good stuff in there. Um, a few people talked about meditation in this and then someone towards the end said centering prayer, which is quite a nice phrase, isn't it? Centering prayer. You know, and uh, is there a difference between prayer and meditation? Maybe one is for the religious and one is for the secular. Uh, or maybe there's some other differences. I once heard um, <laughs> praying is talking to God and meditating is listening to God. Uh, uh, Tobias, this, this is my phrase, centering prayer. Actually, it's, it's a meditation, but with you, it's actually the praying in the same time. And actually, it's a, 
it's a, I was meditating meditating before and now in last last five years I'm I'm doing instead of meditation I'm, I'm doing a pray praying right. and this sentinel prayer is something what you can Google and actually it's a it's a kind it's a nice, of nice yeah I've heard the phrase before and it's um there's you know there's various forms of prayer and various forms of meditation there's a lot they they are they become interchangeable sometimes and some people have a very clear sort of distinction of, about what they are in in all cases though i think it's about it's about stillness isn't it and i think that's the connecting thing so how do we be still um in order to what in order to i don't know but just how do we be still because we've learned in most of our lives to want to be busy to want to get stuff done to be seen to getting stuff done even and this idea of, of prayer for me is is pausing in scrum there's this thing called the retrospective some of you probably know about that um retrospective is for me the way i think of it is the uh, a moment of stillness so in a way the retrospective is the moment of meditation or it is the prayer uh, yes it's a point of of quiet between the busyness of each sprint stillness to open space to say anyway but we're now we're talking about learning and development so where are learning and personal development so what let's type some things in the window around that oh teaching others is great for learning that is yes isn't that great whenever um i've gone on a training course or workshop um, if I come back and I try to tell someone what I learned, I very quickly discover where the holes are. And so I use that technique, that's a teach back technique. I use that in workshops, you know, okay, so you've, I've covered all this now, go away and teach it to each other. And then, and then come back to the rain group and tell me where the holes are, and then we'll fill those in. Um, so it's a great way of kind of identifying what you have learned and what you have still yet to learn. Stillness to open space. Ah, Gabor, what is that? I love this. Gabor's a, a linguist. Business comes from Old English. Bis, how would you say that? Besinus, which also means anxiety. Curious. So the way how you pronounce it is bizignus. Bizignus. Uh -huh. Sinus, bizignus. It really does come from that. It means anxiety. So to be... Is the word busy also connected then, or is that just mythical? That I, I, I think they are not connected, but you would have to check an etymology uh, yeah. dictionary for that one. Yeah, again, let's do some. Yeah, it's like kind of tracing back on a family tree or something, isn't it? You're doing it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, anything else that people want to say about their own learning journey? What were the moments of your learning journey that have been important to you? I, I just have one one more addition to what you said about about training budgets and and not sense not to be sent to trainings but but uh, you, you can choose your own training. Oh. I, I'm also adding to that that I like to pay for my own training because that way, you know, uh, with well, the trainings I tend to attend, they do not have a specific outcome. They might have an outcome. They might not have an outcome. So how would I translate it to return on investment from my employer's part? There is no way to tell whether I will take back anything to the organization or it will just be an experiment. Yeah. So therefore, I, I don't like to risk, I don't like to sort of risk my employer's money on that, but I will risk my own money on that. And that way I might even be show a bit more excitement, show a bit, a bit more involvement mm. because I'm spending my own money, not my company's money. I hear you on that, you know, and as being someone who runs workshops, there is definitely a deeper level of engagement when someone has made the commitment out of their own pocket to pay for this um, than if someone is sent on a training. But, but you know, um, it's quite nice to get your employer to pay for you, isn't it? It's an investment in you. So there's, there's something that needs to be balanced there, I think. But if you choose the training um, and they sponsor you, that's kind of a nice balance, I think, you, you are. Mm -hmm. your, making the commitment um yeah okay we have to kind of like keep moving through this i think any other anything else on learning and development oh i know what i was going to say about that it's not just about going on training courses though is it when we talk about what, who's your teacher 
Um, I'm sure that it's, that's a different kind of way of asking the question, isn't it? Who's your teacher? Two of my best teachers are my two daughters, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why wouldn't they be, you know, the six-year-old and the eight-year-old? Um, there's a lovely film that came out recently. I'm halfway through watching with my kids actually called My Octopus Teacher. Some of you may have, may have seen that. It's really got quite a name for itself. And it's about exactly what it says. It's about being taught about life by an octopus. So we're not, yeah, dog. There we go. I'm learning a lot from my dog. Daniela. Yes, that's true, actually. <laughs> yeah, you know, so our, our, our lessons and our teachers come from all over the place. A, que a lovely question to ask ourselves is when something happens that we don't like, you know, some, someone does something upsets us or the situation doesn't evolve in the way we want it to, um, a lovely question to ask, it's a nice way of reframing disappointment, I suppose, is what is my lesson? What lesson can I draw from this? You know, what am I being taught in this moment? Um, it, it puts a, um, not necessarily a positive spin on it because it's not always about being positive, but it, it gets us to just look at the world a little bit differently than we might be looking at it anyway. Um, so, you know, teaching and learning, we, we get a bit of an, the way I asked that question is quite a narrow way of asking it actually. It got us to focus on corporate training really, didn't it? But it's uh, the world of learning and development is vast. Uh, that's a tiny speck in, inside it all. Right, we're going to uh, go to the next one now. I think we're on track for time. It's hard to, hard to measure this. Um, the next one I'm going to look at is values and principles. Um, we all have them. Um, we all like to talk about them too. Um, corporations are big on that right now. Everyone, every company you go and work for, they've got their value statement, haven't they? Um, and they usually have the same sorts of things on there. We value collaboration. We value teamwork. We value... I don't know, what do they value? What do they value, the organizations? They value uh, integrity, and they value respect, and they value you know, collaboration. They might say that, but they don't always live it, do they? And the story I like to tell about that is when I worked at um, one of those Silicon Valley companies year ago, years ago, when they started doing those value things, they gave us, they printed them all out. So basically it was a, a group of executives who met in a, in a room away from everyone else and decided to figure out what the values of the organization were. Then they printed them all out on bits of paper and, and magnets and things and gave them out to everybody. And I got this little magnet to stick on my whiteboard in my gray cubicle where I sat all by myself. And um, guess what the first thing was on there? It said, we value teamwork. The irony was missed by, by the people who created this thing, you know, going around and giving out these magnets to people hiding in cubicles. So they wanted to, it wasn't that they didn't want to value team, they wanted to, but they didn't know how, they weren't doing it and they weren't really making an effort to do it. Um, and people were rewarded as individuals as well, they weren't rewarded as, as a team. So you were in competition, um, I'm great, you suck kind of attitude prevailed there because you know there was a limited pot of money at the end of each quarter and uh, you got it if you were the star, you didn't if you weren't. So I didn't exactly build build team in that, in that kind of thing. But, you know, so the point I'm making here is we all have values and the, the, the challenge is, do we live? Them? The question we ask is, do we live up to our values? Um, when I'm working with teams doing Scrum, I like to use the five Scrum values as a sort of um, uh, measuring stick of, of some kind, you know, sort of a baseline. You know, how well did you live up to the values of Scrum when you're doing Scrum? You know, how respectful were you in the last two weeks or where were you disrespectful? So you can, if you have a value and say, I value trust, well, talk about when you were mistrusting of somebody, when you were suspicious, because um, then we'll quickly see that, you know, we might have these as aspirations and we should have aspirations. Why not? Um, but we don't necessarily always live up to them. So it's a challenge for ourselves. So values and principles that you hold dear, what's important to you? Um, you might find, I'm sure you will find some commonality among those things when you have that conversation. So we're gonna go into... Rooms of four. Five minutes on values and principles. notes and
I was just reading the notes from the last one and uh, Carlo put the word unlearning in there, which is, um, oh, let me put my picture back on, which is a great word. And um, a lot of the learning that I encourage people to do when I'm teaching my workshops is exactly that. It's about letting go of what you assume to know, what you think you know, what you think you ought to know, and ways of showing up at work. You know, organizational transformation usually comes through people stop doing things rather than starting new things. <laughs> when people ask, for instance, you know, how do I, um, how do I make my team self-organize? You've got these cultures of people being told what to do. And how do I get my teams to self-organize? Well, you stop doing the things that prevents them from self-organizing because naturally in their own environments, people will self-organize. That's, that's our tendency as in groups is to figure things out ourselves. So if you take away the things that you put into place, um, you will you will find that happens. How do I motivate people when you stop doing the things that demotivate them, the things that you've been told motivate them, but actually only work in the short term? You know, take take away those things, and you've got a motivated workforce. So unlearning is a, a, a lovely one. If you could teach a workshop on unlearning, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> just kind of, kind of wouldn't wouldn't have to just not happen at all, right? But now we're going to talk about uh, where are we on values and principles. Do you have to move through this actually what have we got in here um, lucy you live at you work in a company that lives up to their values that's great we should get more of those shouldn't we uh oh the safe environment thing yeah yeah that's probably a, a great value that we 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 all begin to start take a bit more notice of at work isn't it this sort of idea of psychological safety where we are able to share those kinds of things and talk about them openly, not feel afraid. Thank you. Um, uh, any any comment from verbal comment from anybody about values? Okay, I want to jump to Grace because you said something in the last one about educational is meeting people outside of my usual process part of your uh development and i think that that's great and that that sort of that to me speaks of a value that you have the value is to you know stop being safe and stop being um uh, just sort of coddled by my own community and actually to reach out to the other and we need a lot of that these days and we have so little of it you know people are, are getting um polarized by the kinds of social media that we have you know you, you the only things you see on your feed are the things that agree with you and the people that agree with you and so we've lost the ability to have this sort of like challenging conversations with people who are not like us and so or exactly just, the opposite huh? some or exactly the opposite or you know because that triggers comments which which will trigger more clicks and more well, more yeah, engagement but that's the thing is that it's completely polarized you're either you're getting yeah. things that you agree with and when you don't you get violently opposed to it because it's you know it's not uh, yeah it's and, and you know the, the only two reactions on, on 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 your on your facebook is either love or angry face these are the two ends <laughs> about about any sort of news it's either love or angry face. And there is no sort of in-between, which again angry. shows how polarized this has become. Yeah. So Grace, just by you know showing up at a meetup with people who are not in your work community, you're in a different work community, that's a small step, isn't it, towards you know, breaking some of those walls down. So we can do more of that. Bye, Yoris. Thank you. Uh, right, we're going to move on to the next one. Ooh, it's a bit tight. Um, family and friendships and relationships. That's what we're looking at now. So, um, where are we? That's number four, isn't it? Family and friendships. So, um, what's important to you about that? What's important to you about, and what do you bring? And this specifically, let's think about how, what do we bring from our family life and our friends outside of work? What do we bring into the workplace from that? And why is it important? Okay, so there's, uh, ooh, do, 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 do. Let's see how this recreate. Okay, five minutes. Oh, didn't open. What happened? 
I'm going to do a slightly reduced time on this one because we are we're getting a little bit tight on time. Three and a half minutes. Come on, on that one. Three and a half minutes in. Welcome back, everyone. I, I promised Alexander I would be done by quarter two, um, so we don't have a lot of time left. Um, anyone want to put a quick note in there of just one thing that came to mind in that conversation about family? Just two or three words. So Ninad is uh, reaching out. Um, to create new connections and new relationships with you all by putting her, his or her, is that, who is that? I don't know who that is. Putting a LinkedIn connection in there. We can all do that. <laughs> Safety and trust, friends equals family, joyful caring times happening here. Oh, I like that. Family is baseline. That's a nice way of looking at it, isn't it? It's, it's like, it, we don't want to go below that. <laughs> and family can be uh, full of all kinds of um, arguments and emotions, can't it? But, but we deal with it usually, you know, we, we, this is where we have a great, so it connects into learning, doesn't it? We learn from, from our family and the more dysfunctional the family, perhaps the greater the learning. Uh, okay, lovely. Thank you. Do save these chat windows because you can also see who said what. And then you can, um, if they've given you their LinkedIn or their email or something, you can follow up with them and uh, have um, continue that conversation. There's a lot of really good stuff in here. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to keep track of it all. But once you've, you know, collected it and, and look at it in your leisure time, there's lots of good, lots of good ideas. So we're gonna do one more. The last one is going to be nature. The natural world and how that connects you, uh, how it connects with you and how it connects with you and your work uh, and you and your relationships. And so what's important about the natural world for you? And that's the last one we're going to do. Hopefully it's mixed it up a bit more than it did before. I think a lot of you are getting the same people, aren't you? I'm trying to mix it up. It isn't like doing that too much. Right, three and a half minutes again, okay, on nature. Welcome back. Any quick thoughts to type into the chat window on that? We've got about a minute to go to finish this. Let me just hear. I'd love to spend a bit of time talking about that one, actually, but we are slowly running out here. Um, I noticed, uh, actually, the last thing that was typed before you went was family equals harbour or port. And I, I, I like that, you know, sometimes in the, in the work environment, we, we need that harbour or port when the organisation is quite stormy and we're kind of like a boat at sea and we've had this horrible meeting with, you know, some executive team or or, or you know, some difficult group, and we want to come back to harbour, which is maybe our team, come back to our team. And um, this sense of like, we go back to the bosom of our family when things are uh, in life are difficult. And it is, it does feel a bit like a harbour, a safe place to do. Well, Carla, that's interesting. What is it? Most of agile concepts are about biomimics, copying concepts from nature. Yes, that's so interesting, isn't it? Gosh, you could, we could have a whole, conversation about that you know this sort of uh, fractal nature of some of the work that we do and the way we think about things that's lovely if it is not natural it is not agile that's a challenging state when i i, you, I offer that yeah, thank you whoever wrote that was that you again carlo yeah take that one away and think about it you know because agile uh by its nature is an emergent thing. And emergent things are living things. They have to be, can't they? Not static. And so if it's not, it doesn't feel natural, it probably isn't agile. That's quite, that's quite succinct. Running to our Zen of mind to restart and recharge. Oh. That's interesting too. 
Right, so we are about to wrap up. Um, so remember what we've done in this session, we've, we've gone from the question, what do you do for a living? To the question, what do you do for a living? It's almost exactly the same question with that, that one letter, that A in there. And um, so hopefully what you've been doing throughout this, if you've been making notes, is you, you're doing this, you're crafting a personal whole person statement in response to this altered question. So perhaps when someone says to you, what do you do for a living? You might respond, well, I can tell you what I do for a living. And then you've got this kind of uh, thing that you've made today that you can uh, begin to draw them into a more interesting conversation that's wider and larger and deeper than what your job is. That was the point of it, all right? And so we are out of time, a bit over by two minutes. Um, but thanks everyone for sticking it out to the end. There's always, you know, there's... Uh, these things often start quite big and then they sort of peter away for one reason or another. I don't take it personally. But I'm going to hand you back to Alexander now, who's going to talk about um, gifts or something, right? Of course, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I uh, say that this part is better than part we listen to you. So I will be quiet right now and uh, say that uh, this was very, very, very great topic. And uh, this was very inspiring. And uh, I enjoyed in this meetup and I, I heard a lot of different opinions. I heard a lot of different, I learned a lot of different things. And I finally meet you Tobias, which really is a kind of privilege for all of us young people in this world, you know. So guys, uh, now we are going to have some uh, lucky lottery. So what we are going to do, we have some special rewards to give to somebody. And when I say rewards, I mean some present. So we have five uh, books for our participants. Uh, Lisa Atkins is an author and uh, we will give five books and then we will give one free training. It's a certified agile and scrum practitioner training. And when I, uh, or when the wheel choose the name of the winner, uh, you will send me your uh, name, surname, and email address to my mail. I'm going to send you now in chat. Just a second. Here it is, that's my mail. So you can send me mail uh, if you are a winner, of course. Now I'm going to share my screen to spin the wheel. And now we will have first five winners who will get the book. Okay, give me one second, please. We're gonna see the screen, huh? Okay, is it is it okay? No, it's not, uh, we're not, we're j it's just dark screen. Yeah, I see just black. Mm -hmm. It's dark screen, okay, let's, now. Nothing. Nope. Maybe it's no, better. No, no. Now it's fine. Okay, it's like a kind of connection or something like that. Thank you, Daniela. Okay, guys, we can start with the uh, person number one. So three, two, one. Uh, it's Yaroslava. Yaroslava, are you with us? Winner usually has gone home by the time the draw happens. Uh, is Yaroslava here? If she is not here, I'm afraid we will have to choose other person. So Yaroslava, I don't see her among uh, the participants. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try one more time. Now. Oh, Anya. Anya, are you there? Don't tell me Anya is not with us. Okay, Anya is not with us. Oh, gosh. See, people, is there anyone scared? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're scared or something like that. 
<laughs> okay. Like a third, second, third time, a then it's ago. a lucky one. Okay. Now. Yeah, Gabor is there. Gabor is there, definitely. Yeah, Gabor is yes, there. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, Gabor, <laughs> I remembered you. Okay, congratulations, Gabor. So Thanks. you know what should you do, what you should do? Just uh, send me an email with your address, with your name and surname, and the book will be delivered to you. Great. Thank you. You're welcome, Gabor. Congratulations and enjoy in reading. Was that okay. Lisa Atkins' book you've just won? Then yeah, Lisa Atkins' book. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I just think. Okay, we can go with uh, person number two now. Lucy. Lucy's here. Yeah, I saw her. Lucy, are you there? I am. Oh, Lucy, congratulations, Lucy. Oh, you're welcome. I hope you will enjoy the book. So Thank do you. the same as Gabor is going to do. Just send me your details and we'll send you a book. Thank you. That's awesome. Oh, cool. Okay, we are going with the third winner. Now. Hey, Tiana. Hey, Alexander. Tiana, are you there? Yeah, I am. Tiana, congratulations or chestita in Serbian, whatever you like. I hope you will enjoy in your book. Thanks. Just send me the details of mail and we'll transfer you the book. Congratulations. Okay, number four. Three, two, one, and now. Okay, I have to pronounce this right now. Rachel. Uh, yes, yes, it is. Now it's good. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations for, for this book. Okay, the same, the same means for you. Just send me the details and uh, we are going to transfer you in the book. Okay. Thank you. And the last one, when we speak about books, three, two, one, now. Okay, Diljana. Is Diljana with us? Uh, yes, yes, I'm. Yes, I'm. I'm here. Hello, oh, Diljana. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Congratulations for this book. You. And you know what should you do? Just show me the details yes. on mail, and we will transfer you the book. And that would be it. That would be all when we speak about books. Right now, we are going to announce the winner of our uh, free um, Certified Agile and Scrum Practitional Training. So the person who won this uh, should uh, immediately oh, type me an email and I will uh, communicate with that person in order to uh, note somewhere that that person uh, should be provided with information about our uh, practitioner training. So be ready. Three, two, one. Now. Oh, Christina. Christina, are you with us? I am. Um, oh, Christina, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Just to check, is this, which training is it? Because I have a PSM, a PSPO course coming no. Uh, that's, like a <laughs> uh, that's like a basic level if we speak uh, about levels that's the For first PSM? one is that with psm it's certified agile and scrum practitioner okay i'm no, i'm just I'm, checking I'm, who don't it's with. worry i will no, provide you no because no what i would i'd be happy to give it to somebody else that's why i was asking I, i'm happy to kind of do that because i i've done my csm and i'm doing my pspo I just want oh, to make for, sure. for a product owner, right? Yeah, you, yeah. you speak about mm -hmm. product owner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. If okay, of course you can. You can give it to somebody you like, or we can just turn around another circle, whatever you like. Yeah, no, because, uh, no, but is it with, who is it training with? That's all I want to know. Is it a PSM course? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> uh, you mean a Scrum Master? Yeah, the course no, that you're it's doing. Not, it's a basic one. It's a basic one. It's okay, like yeah. age of fundamentals, you know. Okay, then please uh, give it to somebody else. I okay, think cool, it would, cool, yeah. Christine. Right okay. now, go ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. 
One more time. Now. Carla. Carla, are you there? Is Carla here? I'm pretty sure that I've seen him. He was here. And yeah, he was, he was here. Active. I remember. Oh, gosh. He just dropped off. Oh, okay. he was. He was here, but he was, uh, I think, picking up his daughter. So he oh. probably had. Yeah, he probably picked his daughter. Yeah. Such a shame. Really? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. We will do it one more time. Okay. Three, two, one, and now. Vladimir. Vladimir, I know you are I'm, here. I'm <laughs> I here, saw I'm you here. in the last yes. breakout room. Yeah, congratulations, Vladimir. Uh, do you maybe have this score same as uh, uh, same as uh, Christina? So it's PSM. No, it's like a fundamentals. It's uh, the first one. But if you have PSM, I suppose you have this one too. No, I I, I only have from Scrum Alliance. Not but this one Scrum is from age of humans. Okay. Uh, I probably uh, also give up to, 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 to somebody else. As you want, as you wish. Thank you. We can do this, I think, a fourth lucky time. Give me, give me do this. At, at the very end, I will give it to Tobias, as I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a second, please. Three, two, one, now. Sorry, I'm everyone, sure I'm going to get going. Nicola, um, I think Nicola has Thanks so much it. for the evening, though. I will thank see you, you Tobias. Hello. Thank you, Tobias. Uh, thank it you, Tobias. Bye-bye. Really. Thank, thank you, you Tobias. Always. Thank you so much, and have a All nice right. time. Thank you. Uh, I have professional Scrum Master course from scrum.org. So yeah, I'm not so sure we... how this is. Is that connected or not? Maybe we could uh, maybe we could just ask uh, if anyone would like to uh, have, this have like yeah, yeah a certificate okay certificate we can do with that agile and that scrum way, practitioner yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. if uh, if you will already just uh, pass that stage that level it's um, we could do this all night you know <laughs> just uh, raise your hand mm -hmm. or just um, talk to us, uh, say that you, you would like to uh, get a free uh, certified Agile and Scrum Practitioner course or training with us. And just so we could uh, write down your name. And mm, but uh, sorry, is this uh, also part of the Scrum Master training? Uh, do I need yes. this one? So yes. I don't need this one, right? Yeah, so you, you actually need this have one. It. You need this one because this is the the first level. Mm -hmm. This is like uh, basics to just enter Scrum Master training. So okay. we so, recommend. Yeah. I will test you... it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Since I have professional that. Scrum Master train uh, certificate already. Uh, of course. Tatiana. I also have CSM. Tatiana raised the hand. Tatiana. Yeah, it's me. I'm here. Uh, so Tatiana, like, you would like to to to, I to, would like to. okay Tatiana, then Thank let's you. be like that. Tatiana, congratulations. Uh, Thank of you. course, just send me the details in uh, by mail, and I will provide you with all the information. Okay. Thank you. And one more thing, and the last thing, uh, we also would like to give to somebody one free. Uh, teaching course of flamenco dance in Belgrade. So it's very important when I say this, that that person should be in Belgrade. You know, if, if that person- I would have wanted that one, Alexander. Yeah, I know, I know. I, know. I, know. I, know. Like, I knew that you will say, why I want the- <laughs> Uh, okay yeah. guys so christina i would I, I, I would gladly give you the course because you you was the winner actually but jamaica and belgrade are very too far <laughs> but you have invitation to come to serbia whenever you like so is there anyone who would like to 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 have a free course of flamenco you can of course type me on the mail you can think you can consider and if you like, you can write me by mail and I will announce the winner. 
if there is no one who would like to, to cope with that right now. Okay, guys, you have my mail address. So if you like to be part of the Flamenco course, just type me an email address and I will give you information. Are you a winner or somebody else already took it? Uh, on behalf sorry, of- the... sorry, sorry, can I have, I have one question. Is it of during course. the weekend? Weekend, it's a weekend hours or? Uh, that part you are dealing with a mentor. With a teacher, you know, but I'm not sure. discussing with teacher. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I'm not sure if, if it's the, just just weekends or maybe work days, but after hours, like maybe 8 p.m. We're talking about after work. Um, I, I'm not sure, though, but if you're interested, we we uh, we could connect you with with the teacher and, uh, of course, uh, discuss the, those uh, beginning courses and trainings and their times. OK, thank you very much. I'll send thank you. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Well, this is this is the end. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you will be with us uh, next first thir thir Thursday in a month. That would be February. Unfortunately, January is reserved for Christmas holidays in Serbia. So uh, I hope uh, we will one more time see each other uh, in February. Thank you very much. Have a good night, day, afternoon, morning of the time zone and uh, we wish you uh, everything best for the new year thank you bye. so much thank guys. you bye bye, 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 bye guys bye. thank you Cheers. i'm expecting your mails thank you thank you <laughs> just stop